Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm just I'm asking myself a question, so hopefully this works. Um, if you do see it, you'll notice it. And be, be sure and vote it up. Um, hello. Um, I always I always screw this up where the pres the person who who introduces me introduces me, and then I have this introduction slide. So hi, my name is Harper Reed, and uh, I was a CTO for Obama for America. Um, I was really excited about doing that, but it was uh, an interesting experience that I'm about to tell you about. So the first thing is is I didn't know that we were using ask.technoi.com or whatever, and so I said go ahead and hit me up on Twitter with your questions and um, I'll get to them later. But I guess that's for later, later, and uh, you guys can all reach out that way. Um, so, like Seth said, I was the CTO for Obama for America. Um, this was a little bit unexpected. If you would have talked to me in 2010 or 2011, early 2011, said, hey, you're going to be CTO for Obama for America, I would have said, what? This is crazy. And the reason was is because this was the CTO in 2008. Um, <laughs> Michael Slaby, uh, who he was who hired me, he found me and most of and and and, and now in, empowered me to hire my team. Great guy, um, worked with us on the campaign. But you may have noticed a difference between that and that. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> that was in 2012. Um, so. The thing, this is actually posted on the Tumblr. I took this off of the, the official um, Obama for America Tumblr. Um, and a, a funny story about this is I was at a high school after the campaign and I was talking about what we did and, and I had a button that said that. And this, this high school kid was like, what does your button say? And I said, YOLO. And the entire class face palmed. And I've never felt like more of a, like a, I don't know. Um, anyway, um, the question is why? Why me versus someone like Slavy? And the reason was, was this, this, this saying that my wife told me, which was uh, mochi wa mochi ya, which is the idea that if you want rice cakes, you go to the rice cake store. Um, or we hired engineers to do engineering. Um, <laughs> this is not so crazy for you startups, but this is, this is pretty crazy for many organizations out there that aren't so familiar or tech native. Um, and the campaign is something, if you look at campaigns, they started a very long time ago. And technology is still this new idea. And um, in 2004 with Dean, they really started to use technology. The team in 2008 just went above and beyond anything we expected. But we knew that in 2012, we needed to do something even more. <laughs> so this is our little GitHub guy. And uh, one of our designers um, added a little but but uh, button to him. And, uh, Yes, we code, which is true. Um, so what did we do? Well, we hired 40 engineers. Um, and that was just the back-end engineers and the, and the people who supported those engineers. Um, we hired them from these companies. My favorite one is Harper Rules LLC. That's a really cool company um, doing some really neat stuff. <clears throat> we had about 120 technology staff. So this was from analytics to IT to digital design, digital front end, and all of that. And then the most important thing is we had 18 months. So imagine I come to you as a, a, a potential engineer and I say, look, we're going to do this crazy thing. It's going to be this huge enterprise solution and we have a very small amount of time. Um, it's impossible, but you know, there is something that we, else we had. We had Chicago. Let's give it up for Chicago. <laughs> Chicago is all about execution and execution is really important for this because we only had 18 months and the most important thing is we didn't want to fuck it up. <laughs> so this is a cake that was bought by uh, one of our DevOps guys towards the end of the campaign. Um, we did eat the cake, but it, was, but it sat there for like three days because no one wanted to eat it before we won. <laughs> so we didn't want to like eat it and then be like, oh, fuck. Uh, so um, we started out with almost zero. We had these great organizations we worked with that had done some really amazing things in 2008, Blue State Digital, the DNC, and we had a little tiny stack, this little tiny bit of technology, but we needed to build a platform. Um, and so this comes Narwhal, which was our technology platform, and also my favorite slide of this presentation. <laughs> So this is Jim Messina, the campaign manager as Narwhal, as a Narwhal, and we, we made these, we did these presentations every week to kind of talk about where technology was and what we were doing, and at the end of every presentation, we had a different representation of his, him as an animal. Um, because, I don't know why. <laughs> um, Narwhal was a concept. It was this idea that we could build this platform, this API that would allow us to build on top of it. And we built a lot of things on top of it, and the reason we did a platform was because an API equals freedom. 
a lot of times you see these great organizations that build these products and the product's use becomes very limited. It hits this wall. Um, and then on the other side you have the same product and it blows up. An example of this is Twitter. Um, it's amazing how far Twitter has gotten and of course now they're you know, shutting down parts of their API so we'll talk about that later. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it, was, it was really important to build this platform because in came the products. And the products we built were things like Call Tool, like Dashboard, all of our mobile apps, our contribution apps. How many of you used any of these apps? Did anyone volunteer in any way for the campaign? So, like four of you. Um, <laughs> it was really, this is, <laughs> a lot of people use these. I'm actually, I think you're lying. Um, <laughs> the technology we used, we, one of the things that was really important because we wanted this to be kind of technology from your guys' world, from the startup world, we needed to use the tools that the technologists, these engineers used. So we standardized by saying, we really don't care what you use, as long as you use GitHub, um, Max, and all that other stuff, so, which, is, which is really a lot of freedom there. Um, we had about 290 repos that were constantly deployed. Um, I don't know how many repos you guys usually have, but imagine an application that had a huge scale like that. It was pretty crazy. Towards the end, we had thousands and thousands of servers. That was really awesome. But the scariest part was that failure was not an option. Um, we needed to win. When I got in there, um, I remember all of these people that became my friends saying, like, you don't know what you're doing. And I was like, that's true. Uh, I know technology, but this, this is something that you think is true for your startups. But imagine if you have one day, and if you fuck it up, you're going to fuck up all of the US. <laughs> right? So I mean, you, you, can't, you can't really mess up. Um, and as technology, Technology is not your friend, right? Who here thinks technology is your friend? There's one lying person as well. Um, but the thing is, is you can't trust it. It never goes well. The users are hard to interact with. They're hard to find out like, what they really want. It's hard to make sure that they're, that they're getting the right experience. So we invested in a couple things, and we spent a lot of time on these things. User experience. How many of you in your startups have a user experience dedicated person? Okay, that's not enough hands, because this is one of the number one things that you can do to make sure that your startup is doing great things. The next one, and I can't reiterate this enough, is we did a lot of game days. We practiced failing. We went through and struggled every single day in October failing. It was terrible. Um, but then, in October, October 22nd, there was an outage on Amazon, and it was also this, the third debate and we had zero downtime when half of the internet was down. So E-Day. Um, E-Day was awesome because we spent all October basically failing over and over again. We were ready for it. Um, and I took this picture of a note that was, I think, near our email team, and I thought it would just really kind of gave us a good idea of what <laughs> happening. So on E-Day, there was no more changes. So that meant that E-Day really was just us hanging out in my office listening to R&B waiting for fires, waiting for things to fall down, and luckily we had very few problems and we had no downtime. So we won, and it made everything great. I'm able to do this talk. I think it would be quite a different discussion if we would have lost. Um, <laughs> but I have some takeaways for you guys. The first one was, I think the innovation was the team. And this goes on for the entire campaign. When you hear about the tech press right now talking about the campaign, they often talk about the, the, the technology we built. But as you guys know, technology doesn't last. This technology that we built for 2012 is not going to last until 2016. It probably won't last for another couple months. Um, but we had the right people. And this goes from all of the volunteers to the field organization to every single person that interacted with the campaign, campaign was exactly the right person. The next thing is this is something that's really important for all of you to help out with. It's very hard to get women and non-Asian minorities into technology and into engineering teams. The only people that can solve this problem is you guys, well, and myself. Um, and so really, we all need to work together to solve this problem and get more people in technology and get less people that look like me helping build your teams and helping build your technology. <laughs> Another thing is politics doesn't like change. They have a formula that works. So when you're in there trying to change it, it's very difficult. Um, we luckily worked with some really great people, some of them are in the back, who helped us facilitate this and helped us build some of these really great um, and exciting products. Um, and then Chicago is a great place for execution. 
Um, if any of you are tempted to move to the valley, go do it. Um, we'll be here building big businesses. Um, you can always work harder. I, I remember halfway through the campaign, I was like, Jesus, I'm working a lot. And then it was like, you know, three quarters of the way, it was double that. And then it just kept going until it was like this singularity of working forever. And uh, luckily we won, so we, did, we could stop working. But um, you can always push yourself. You can always go over that hump. Don't give up. And I'll leave you with this that is one of my favorite <laughs> gifts, and that's about it. Did my question win? I, I don't know. Which one was it? Why is Harper so awesome? Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I just gave a presentation I it, on it. I thought, about, uh, I thought about what you said. I remember I, I asked you in October to do this. I guess I, we did ask before. Could have been a very different... I didn't answer uh, until after, though. Oh, yeah. Sure. But, uh, all right. So people are very curious. What, uh, what is your next project? Um... <clears throat> I'm not really sure, but if you find out, let me know, because I'm looking for it. So the real answer is I have a small team. We're uh, hustling on what's next. But what that means in, in, in the practical sense is we're just kind of hanging out. I'm personally playing a lot of Minecraft and uh, reading a lot. Um, we're focused on solving some problems in the enterprise. Um, we noticed that a lot of the software we built um, helps facilitate um, organizations, so whether it's Threadless or the campaign, it's kind of this internal software that helps people work faster and harder. Um, and so that's something that we're interested in, in continuing. All right. Here's actually an interesting one. What, uh, how can we hire former staff now that the campaign is over? So that's really easy. There's actually a couple people in the back that you can talk to that, have, that, have, that, are, that know people, and you can always talk to me. Um, send me an email. My email's on my website, harperreed.com, and um, I'll connect you with some people. Um, there's a lot of people still in Chicago. There's a lot of people who are still looking for jobs. And then there's people all over the nation who are actually um, just starting to awaken from this post-campaign slumber. Um, and now that the inauguration is over, we're all like, whoa, we did it. So there's no, there's no central site or like, um, create like a listserv? Like, I was at the campaign. I'm awesome. Hire me. Um, no. Well, just curious. There should be. Uh, I know we have, to, we have to tiptoe around this one a little bit, but uh, someone said I, I worked for a mid in 2008. Uh, we had a huge problem communicating across organizations, state parties, yep. county parties, PACs. How did you guys get around that? Was it APIs or? Um, I don't know. I mean, we, we, it was, this was a difficult thing. I mean, I think one thing we had is we had an organization that had, that had kind of lasted. So we had people who knew um, what they were doing from 2008 um, coming in and really helping make sure everyone was working together. Um, we also knew what was at stake, and so we didn't kind of spend a lot of time on the BS parts. We really tried to maximize the communication, and um, there was a lot of rules in the, in the campaign, and one of them was no silos. You know, the idea of just we need to make sure communication is open because um, those are the type of things that, that allow you to run a bad campaign, and we would have lost. All right. How, uh, how integral was A-B testing to the success of the campaign? It was very integral. Um, I don't have a slide on it, but I should add it. That's a good point. Um, testing was something that, that um, the front-end team did all day long and aggressively, aggressively um, participated in. There's a great post by Kyle Rush. I think it's kylerush.net, maybe, um, talking about some of the A-B testing that he did with the contribution stuff. I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, we used Optimizely. Um, so did Mitt Romney and half the internet. Um, so it's something that you guys should also use. Nice. So uh, this is something I remember running into a lot. Everyone I was talking to was like, oh, I'm going to go work for Harper. So uh, how did you find and recruit your ridiculous team? I, uh, the first thing I did is I went to a lot of events like this. Um, I also emailed everyone. So if there was someone that I thought was doing something cool, I'd email them. Um, oftentimes, they wouldn't reply. And I just keep emailing them, or I try and do something that would let me show up in their radar. I was always nice, or tried to be. Um, I tried to remember people's names a lot, and um, I have a huge Rolodex. Um, for the first about 25 people, it was all hired off of my personal network with no job descriptions, um, and uh, just me calling people. And the calls would go like this: I would say, "Hello, this is Harper. Do you want to work for the president?" And they would either say like "Yes," which many did, or "or wrong team." Like there was. It was, pretty, it was pretty easy to hire for, you know, to say the truth. Um, in, like, in 
how I would do this going forward is you need to make sure that your product is so good that people want to work there. Um, and if, if you have a hard time pitching your product to people, and like, so if someone says no to you, you should call them up and be like, why'd you say no? Find out why they don't want to work for you. Um, you, not all of us are going to have something as amazing as, you know, re-electing the president. I mean, that's something that's pretty easy to convince people to do, especially if they're Democrats. It's a little harder for the ones that weren't Democrats, um, <laughs> but they still came. Uh, but I would say just make sure that your pitch is so good that, and it's a different pitch than you're giving here or you're giving to investors. It has to be like, why would I want to spend my life working with, with you? Um, and it's almost, you want them to interview you. Um, and some people do it the other way, where they, you know, they think that the engineer or the person that you're hiring should pitch the employer. But I, I think that's how you lose people. Okay. Uh, that was similar to another question, where it was how you got people to leave their awesome jobs or something. It was temporary. It was all the money that we paid them. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. That's a lie. Uh, uh, so this person saying they they agree about minorities and women in tech, uh, but how do you actually address that? I think the first thing that we need to do is start talking about it. Um, without having a dialogue between, um, in like places like this, we're never going to get anywhere. Um, the second thing is try. Um, I think a lot of people just aren't trying. I know that it was something that I didn't try in the beginning, and then when I realized that, I, that we needed to, um, it was harder. If I would have tried in the beginning, it would have been easier. Um, the other thing is, is make sure that you're working with someone. Here's a crazy idea. Um, when you're interviewing people, make sure that the people interviewing the potential candidates all aren't white dudes with beards. It seems crazy, I know. <clears throat> invite a woman to do that. Weird. Um, and invite people that don't look like you to help out. Um, make it so it's, so it's a place that uh, is more welcoming. Make it so it's not so alienating. I've been in engineering shops where it's a lot of insider vocabulary, a lot of insider games. And that doesn't make anyone feel welcome, especially people that don't look like you. Uh, I know you have to tip down around some of these, but is there anything you can talk about as far as the predictive analytical aspects? Or? That wasn't really my team, so I, I don't really know much about it. Okay. Uh, have you high five POTUS? Say that? High five the president. I didn't high five him, but I, I got a hug, which was pretty awesome. Oh, uh, one word, Trista. Does that mean something? Trista? Trista? Yeah. No? Sorry, Harper, it's a typo. I tried to talk to Trista. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no. All right. uh, <laughs> uh, are you hiring for your current project, and what kind of qualifications are you looking for? Um, we're looking for really great engineers, always. Um, but right now, it's just mostly getting to know each other. So if you're interested in um, doing something interesting um, that have, I have no idea what it will be, <laughs> um, feel free to reach out. Actually, that's a really good question, because you have a crazy background. What is your background before all the campaign? Um, before the campaign, I worked at a company called Threadless. How many of you guys know Threadless? Great company, um, started there as, a C as an engineer, became CTO, and was there for three or four years. Well, four or five, I suppose, really. Um, before that, um, worked at an ad agency, did a little bit of time with Seth Godin. I did describe that like jail. Um, and then before that, um, I worked at a company called World Book, and, um, and uh, before that, college. But I've always been a hacker, always been playing computers, always using computers. and. Um, I think that's one of, going back to the question about you know, hiring people that don't look like me, um, one of the things that we have to do is we have to create, I think, create a more hacker vibe with younger people and really try and get people involved in technology much earlier. When I talk to people, it doesn't matter who it is, when they're young and you describe like, someone building an iPhone app, they're like, wait, someone built this? Um, so I think we just need to let people know that this is something they can do. Like There's a potential there for them to even achieve that. And because I had it, and we don't have that anymore with our children. Uh, one last question here. So, uh, biggest learning experience, biggest takeaway from the campaign? Um, I don't know if I know that yet. Um, I know there's a bunch. I think one of the, one of the, there was this experience that I learned from John Maeda. Do you guys know John? He's the, he's the uh, head of RISD. Um, he came in in this really hilarious meeting where he kind of ran in and he showed me this thing and he ran out. And, it was, and we had like an hour scheduled, and it took like 15 minutes, and so it was super weird. But he came in and he was like, look, I imagine you're dealing with a lot of, um, you know, like just trust issues, which any technology that comes into an organization that has never worked with like hardcore engineers would, you know, so here's how you do this. You manage through your outbox. Make sure that you're reaching out to people. Like if you're expecting them to email you, it's not going to happen. 
Um, so this goes to whether you're dealing with leads, whether you're dealing with salespeople, whether you're dealing with any organization, you need to reach out and touch them because they don't really care. They're not going to wait for, they're not going to reach out to you just randomly. Um, so this, what this manifested itself in is, is people who I felt um, either I needed to interact with more or um, I felt there was some, maybe some tension there. I would just make sure that I would email them and just say like, hey, I hope things are going well. Let me know how I can help. And I, that, I found that email that just like, kind of just like a ping would oftentimes result in a very good conversation that got over the beef, got over any of the BS that was there, and really got us to, to where, the, where we were um, hitting the pavement and going as fast as we needed to do. Um, so also probably get over yourself. <laughs> Took me about two months, four months, maybe six months, and then finally it was like, oh, okay, cool. And then we were good, which I'm sure my friends in the back can agree to. All right. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Oh,